Hey, this is Anthony Threstle. You've got to decide and ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new AGV Pista GPR available at Revzilla.com. They've added an R to it. It was already sexy, it was already aggressive, it was already Valentino Rossi's. New for the fall of 16 going into 17. This is the AGV Pista GPR, which out of the new lineup of sport and race oriented helmets from AGV, this gets the most changes. It also happens to be the Apex Predator, the most aggressive. Take it to the track or lose it forever. You're not buying this to ride on the street unless you just want to be really silly. This is a race thoroughbred. This is the Valentino Rossi helmet. Three pounds, five ounces, full carbon fiber and aggressive. Now, they've made a handful of changes. Let's quickly walk through them, then we'll talk briefly about fit, and then I'll break it down soup to nuts for you. If we look at it from the outside, you're going to see a brand new mechanism in the shield. It's now five millimeters versus three millimeters. It's stronger and it comes with a 120 pin lock visor in the box, the pin lock 120, giving that double pane construction. You're also going to see that much like Ducati, Honda, Yamaha this year, the piece the GPR gets its vents on the front as well. So right out of MotoGP, now you're getting big scoops, really are like ram air intakes on your chin vent here that are gonna flow more air and to fog your shield even faster. The other big changes that you're gonna notice when I turn it backwards, you're going to see that they're using the biplano system. No, it's not a biplane done in Italian where they just added an O to the end, they're reeling it called, really calling it the biplano system. What they're saying is really you take a helmet that already had a very, very minimum Z coefficient and they're actually giving you four more degrees of stability here by limiting that this instability as well as breaking up the laminar flow. You can see that across the back here when you talk about aerodynamic profile. I'll also say this too, that with the front scoops and the back biplano system, it's just becoming very aggressive. It's even more outer space-like, which I like because I consider MotoGP athletes to be aliens the way they ride. You can also see these big scoops coming over the top of the vents. And again, they've changed the metallic element of the vent. The other thing to keep in mind, again, we're talking a lot about aerodynamics. It is full carbon fiber. It's composite carbon fiber. Remember the strongest lightweight materials available. You can see it's a 90 to uh, about 110 degree carbon fiber. Again, made in Italy. And that's really where a lot of this technicality comes in. You're still investing in the most premium and most technical materials on the market as they've made these upgrades moving forward. The other thing you need to keep in mind is I'm going to give you a quick shot of it. And I know I'm working through it really quickly. They've added a hydration integration system here. And it actually comes with a big bite valve from Camelback in the box, which is really nice. And if we look at the bottom, the bottom neck roll has been changed. It's now hydrophobic and it has an emergency cheek pad removal system. In my estimation, the previous version of the piece to GP, it was sacrilege not to have an emergency cheek pad removal system. And now you have it, everything pulls out. So even when Rossi is unconscious on the track, the EMTs can pull this helmet off without moving his spine. And that is the whole point. So all in, you're gonna get a helmet that really has played at the top of the food chain, super lightweight. In my opinion, it could be a hair lighter. Three pounds, five ounces isn't the lightest that we've seen, but you're looking at something playing north of the $1,400 mark. Yes, that's right. $1,400 is, I think, the starting point for this bad boy. Apex Predator, right out of the spaceship, but it looks like that, it plays like that, and ultimately they are investing a lot of time, energy, money, and research to really raise the game. It also comes with tear-offs. You're gonna get a tear-off system in the box as well. Now that I've walked you through all the things that have changed, which I really don't have a lot of gripes with, except for the fact that it is a nosebleed expensive helmet, let's talk briefly about fitment. The fitment on this guy's intermediate oval. AGV calls it the egg shape, we call it intermediate oval, but the nice part about it, when you see me pull it apart from the inside out, the inner guts are going to be tunable. It has two wings that move front and back, side to side, and they've actually printed instructions now on the inside of the comfort liner. There are discs that are done in dense foam baked into that comfort liner that are removable and swappable, so you can change the density. Again, the fit is race fit, intermediate oval, not overly wide, not overly narrow. You do have the ability to tune it up around the top of the head, but again, with the way the cheek pads are done, they're now denser and more all-encompassing. This is a race fit. It is meant to race or fit very snugly. At 200 miles an hour, this helmet is not supposed to move. And to do that, you need to eliminate all the gaps and use denser foam that will stand up to all of that air pressure. Know that that is the technology you are investing here. Use the size chart, we'll ship for free over 39 bucks. And I'd love it if you click our logo, subscribe to Revzilla on our YouTube channel. Leave me your comments, request your feedback, more importantly, on our YouTube page. I'd love to hear what your favorite upgrade or your biggest gripe is on the new G Pista GPR from AGV.
Now, that being said, let's dive into the helmet, which again, from the outside in has a lot of things working. You're going to notice there's a lot of ventilation on this helmet, lots of ventilation. Down here along the front, you have the scoops. They are open and closable on the inside. Very hard to see, but you can see that going up and down. You also see up along the top, because this is a racetrack oriented helmet, you really basically have the vents open at all times. These pieces are used to insert into them to close them off from rain if you wanna shut them. Notice you get two additional ones in the box. I'm gonna put my pile of rubber over there. And the way they've done these vents now, they're done in a metallic. They were always metal. They were painted before. They almost look plastic. No, these are premium metal, scoop, met, metal scoops here, and they should tie in. They actually look really nicely. They tie in with the vents that come around the sides here. So instead of plastic, you're getting metallic and metallic mesh, which is really nice. It is a class one optically correct shield that is scratch resistant. I have my pin lock installed there. And what you're gonna notice is on the shield, there is cracked city position. It is a center locking device and up and down. And the shield change mechanism isn't the easiest. It isn't the most simple, but it's ultimately, I'm gonna open it up here and show you how it works. It's pretty simple. It comes off just like that. But again, it's not the most easy to use, but I kind of don't care because this helmet's designed for the track, not for quick swapping to a smoke shield, which you can get. The other thing they changed, and we saw this show up on the Corsa R, the new version for seven, going into 17, they've recessed the button, just made it that much more safe so that you're not accidentally opening and closing it. And I would say this, if this wasn't such a race thoroughbred, I'd have a gripe that there was no detent, and I might have a gripe like I did on the Corsa R, that there's no mechanism pulling it back when it goes down against the gasket to give you a better seal from Mother Nature. But I kind of don't care because ultimately if you buy this and you're riding on the street, I still think you're silly. This is really a track oriented helmet and it's optimized to invest in every place that will upgrade the protection, comfort, um, and performance on a racetrack. But what it's not doing is really thinking that hard about making it easier for street use because that's not what it's designed for. And I like it when things specialize, especially at a high end. If we turn to the side, you're gonna see this big ridge. That's the integrated ventilation system from AGV. Air comes in, it moves through this ridge. It has big cutaways in the EPS liner and vents to the head. And we talked about the biplano system. And again, the ridges, it's meant to eliminate laminar flow, Z coefficient, and for the first time, we have this slotted. So again, you have that ridge just kind of keeping everything in place, stability at head checks, stability at sea speed, and again, eliminating any of that vacuum, trying to keep things stable so that when you're riding, especially in a longer distance race, it's going to eliminate the pressure pulling this away on your head and really allow it to be stable and down. Again, they call that the Z coefficient. The other thing to keep in mind too is remember, this helmet is designed to be in this position. Even the way the eye port in your head sits in the helmet, it's meant to be there, chin on the tank. So ultimately, if that's not your riding position, think long and hard before you invest in one. Because again, if it's not, it's not fully optimized to be in the three quarter of the upright riding position. Again, that's just not why they designed it. Now I'm gonna reach over here and not try to spill my, my coffee that you can't see and grab my donut. If we look at it from the bottom here, new materials. They still have this neoprene piece here that creates a great seal against your head. And now they've integrated Again, this is a way to, you can remove this, but this is the Camelback hydration system that's gonna be baked in. So it'll work with any Camelbacks. That's how you would connect it. Notice it loops around. Your chin skirt here has been smallered, made less big and simplified. And you're also going to notice here at the front, we talked about that button that allows you to open and close the venting on the front. Very simple to use. Now, what I do like about it, let's use that emergency cheek pad removal system. Oh, boom goes the dynamite. It's nice when everything just works, right? So we use that emergency cheek pad removal system that I said was almost malpractice they didn't have before. You can see the way that this unhinges on the front. Again, like I said, fully removable and adjustable. And this is where you'd put that big bite valve that I threw on the floor earlier in the video. Again, the way that that's works in, very simple to install, very simple to remove. Again, just a tube, just a tube. But again, if we look at the inside here, you're going to see the density has changed. It's a Shalimar liner. It's dense, antimicrobial, moisture wicking, big cutaways along the ear, obviously no pockets for speakers. This helmet is not, if you're gonna buy this and put a Bluetooth comm unit, go stand in the corner because you're not paying attention. And if we look at the rest of the helmet here, the way that this works, again, one piece, simple, durable, premium, comfortable against your skin, cradling, and dense enough to stand up to the wind at 200 miles an hour. Now, if we look at the inner guts here, let's pull this out. This liner hasn't changed at all. This is the same off of the Pista GP, except for the fact that you can see now they gave you instructions. And again, it's not because they think we're dumb Americans. I promise. Italy, I ain't mad at you. It's because there's a lot going on here. Notice the wings along the back. The fact that these are movable and adjustable you can open that up. Notice I have this tab to cover the micro Velcro so it doesn't get caught on anything else. I have the ability to cinch it, pull it down, tighten it. 
Again, lots of adjustability. These are the discs that I talked about that sit underneath the vents, but they'll allow you to also fine tune the density. These can be flipped over depending on how you want to ride them. There's a lot going on here. It's a sonically welded 3D liner, again, that is going to be high, it's, it's going to be high or upper grade materials. Again, meaning it's wicking, high quality. That's the word I was looking for there. Again, they've really spared no expense. The other thing about the backside here is notice this little pocket. No, it's not the Colorado stash pocket. What this pocket is, is this is where you would put this piece of foam that comes in the box if you prefer a little bit more tension underneath the occipital ridge in your head. So if you want to beef up the way this feels underneath the back side of your noggin down towards your neck along your mandula oblongata, that area, this is where you'd add that piece of foam, but that's really up to you. But the fact that you can fine tune it front, back, left, right, it's going to be that intermediate oval head shape, but again, you have the ability to work with it. In my book, that's a plus because again, someone that's spending the time to really get the most out of the features and where they're playing with this helmet, you want the ability to make it uniquely your own and they're giving you the ability to do so. Now the last thing on the helmet, if I open it up here, this is a story I've told many times. Big cutaways in the EPS, multi-density EPS. It's a shock absorbing layer. You can see where the vents come in. You can see how those vent holes line up directly with the holes in the comfort liner. They vent along to the back and then they're scooped out and extracted out the back. Remember, warm air at high speed or regular, regular strength air, or regular temperature air, any air at high speed coming over the top of a sphere creates a vacuum behind it and it extracts and forcefully pulls that warm, moist air out of the helmet away from your head, hopefully allowing it to cool you as the sweat wicks and evaporates out and away from your head. And again, that is the way that that helmet is designed. So if we look at it, you're looking at a helmet that got a lot of feature upgrades. It's now more aerodynamic, it's more aggressive looking, it's more functional, it's more protective. Again, the interior liner and the comfort elements have been completely overhauled and it's a little bit easier to use. So all in the piece to GPR, and again, a little bit sexier there, Batman style. The piece the GPR is the alien of helmets in the highest class of alien riders designed from the DNA of Valentino Rossi. We could call it like the Serpentor of race helmets. But again, we're fans of it. My only gripe is that three pounds, five ounces, I really think that you might be able to make it a little bit lighter AGV as you continue your progression in the Pista family. But really, I'm not the guy behind the wheel designing these, so it's easy for me to cast a stone from my seat. The next step in your journey is to click the info button, your desktop, your mobile device. Visit the product detail page at revzilla.com and read other rider reviews of the AGV Pista GPR. You should not just take my word for it. As always, we'll ship for free over 39 bucks. If you want to talk to a gear geek, see us at revzilla.com or 877-792-9455. Thanks for watching our detailed breakdown. Remember to subscribe to us at Revzilla on our YouTube channel. Stay up to date with our opinion of the latest and greatest in the Moto Universe. I'm Anthony. We'll see you next time.